Four years ago, in the early days of the monastery, I wrote an article detailing my issues with the old school renaissance, the OSR. In my initial article, I was fairly harsh with my issues of this movement. However, a lot can change in about four years. So given the breadth of experiences I've had with RPGs since, do I still hold on to my issues with it? Well... Can you make yourself more than just a man? If you can devote yourself to a night, and if they don't stop you, for those unaware, the OSR is a movement in RPGs that seeks to emulate the classic days of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons with a few modern twists. Many of these are also called retro clones as, barring a few differences again, they're not too far removed from their classic influences. While there are retro clones of games outside of D&D, the 4C system is a strong example of this, it's the most common form and thus what it's often associated with. Therefore, I'll be using that as the backdrop for this discussion. In this looking back at my initial opinions, I'm going to be running through the individual points I made in that article and whether or not I still hold them, or if my feelings have changed since then. A criticism I had is that many OSR games use what I've called the Tolkien melting pot to describe the kind of generic fantasy seen in D&D and its contemporaries. This tends to be a hodgepodge of elements from Tolkien's work, with aspects of Michael Moorcock, Fritz Lieber, and Robert E. Howard. This made sense as these authors and a few others were one that Gygax and Arneson liked. In fact, many traditions of D&D itself can fall into that banner. One thing I will humbly concede is my assertion that retro clones are mostly the aforementioned melting pot. I cannot make that claim anymore. Not in the face of games like Kaigaku, Flying Swordsmen, and Scarlet Heroes. I will contend, however, that these games are in the unfortunate minority. I understand why, but it is something I have to note. Furthermore, I wasn't able to elaborate at the time why I had such an issue with the Tolkien melting pot beyond it being too standard. For me, the problem is twofold. One, a single genre like fantasy is going to have a vast degree of variance and subgenre, as would any other genre. Because it's trying to encompass so many styles of fantasy all at once, the mechanics can't properly reflect any in particular. This leads to the second problem. A game like D&D, while versatile, is not a universal style game. D&D is not GURPS. It doesn't have the tools to accompany multiple genres without extensive house ruling. This is why I called it a melting pot. Everything blends together, but nothing really sticks out. I still hold the majority of the opinions on it that I did before. I detest, on principle, save or die traps or effects. Because in a group setting, they're just not fun. I'm all in favor of punishing a player for doing something stupid or making an error, but the idea that save or die or random death builds character is ludicrous to me. That said, this is less of an issue with OSR games themselves and more of an issue with the OSR community. Again, this is something more often on proponents of the subgenre than on the designers themselves. Regardless, the notion that old school games were more about skill and role playing than having just a bunch of stats is something I find highly elitist. It's basically another version of bad wrong fun in all but name. In hindsight, I think I got off on the wrong foot with the OSR. Because I was introduced to it at a time when everyone was at the peak of their hate wagon regarding D&D 4th edition and the overpraising of Pathfinder, I think that colored my stance on things. Not helping matters is that many OSR games would make claims of being true fantasy or real fantasy or bringing it back to the way it's supposed to be, and so on. In doing so, they end up writing checks that they can't cash because these claims are putting massive expectations on themselves. Those claims seem to have dialed back over the years, but these days I more often hear them from the OSR community than from any particular game itself. I also think my distaste for nostalgia addiction, as I said in my first video I call nostalgia the sweet poison, played a part in things in some way. I've spoken on many occasions I don't like treating nostalgia as a placebo, and I find doing so is insulting to the work, doubly so when it's used to step on newer or even older works that someone just doesn't happen to like. I've always been of the opinion that instead of being the dog sitting on a nail, that time's better served looking for what carries the spirit of that work in a new way. But most of all, what I think soured me was my big introduction to the OSR community, Lamentations of the Flame Princess, a game that will never be in the review queue because of its lack of quality and because of the designer of the game, James Ragai IV. I don't want to veer too far into my issues with both, but suffice to say his attitude in game design and trying way, way too hard to be edgy left the worst taste possible in my mouth. All in all, do I hate the OSR? Not as much as I did four years ago, no. I acknowledge there's a right way to do it and a wrong way. 
It mostly comes down to how much it treats the source material as gospel. I still have my issues with several OSR games, but I find that more of my issues are with the more grognard-esque of the community, rather than with the games themselves in most cases. While there's certain issues I have with AD&D follow-ups like these, I'm far more selective on what gets on the hate meter Speaking of which, in the next review we'll be looking at one such retro clone that's been in the queue, but that's another story. Hey there folks, thanks for watching through it. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a like and shoot me a few lines about what you'd like to see next. I'm always looking for feedback. I do have an Imager album that's going to contain future review ideas. That's expanding every moment. And if you feel like supporting your favorite monk, check out my Patreon. That's going to be linked in the low bar. But until then, my name is Miltra. I'm your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.